England, yeah, they're in the semi-final of the oh World my Cup. Oh God. It's great. Talk enough. about a big match preview. England versus Croatia, fueled by co-op. This whole tournament has just been unbelievable for all England fans sort of coming right. together. Football is about coming together. Yeah. And we're going to do that right now. We're coming together to enjoy some lovely dirty fries. Can Friends I, football dirty fries. Trade, can I? Flav. Yeah. Oh, have, well, you got a, yeah. have you got a hipster vegetarian friend like Flav? This is, is this perfect? And you need, a, you need an option <laughs> with a kick? Yeah. This is the one for you. Get in there, guys. Oh, my God. Yeah? You have to do that. Oh, I love cheese. All right, go on. I love chips. Yeah. And I love jalapeno. Right, more it. <laughs> Tuck yeah. into a bit of golden ale. Come on. Cheers. It's not bad, is it? To England. Mm. Yeah, to England winning a well, beautiful tournament. Yeah. No, you're not having it yet. No, all right. Believe we'll, in we'll it. Get believe in we'll it. Get Please believe in it. There is a whole selection of co op ales, so go down to your local store, check them out. Also, you can get those dirty fries in selected stores. Make sure you drink responsibly and get involved. Right, lads, let's do. I can't believe we're doing this. Well, let's do a semi final preview. Unbelievable. Which England are involved in? I did just you have love any before, it. before you started, did you have any idea that we would be doing this? I may have predicted England would make this. I mean, I, I definitely knew you did. I did. No, I definitely but knew. I thought we'd, beat, we'd have to beat Germany to get there. Yeah. And I was being like super optimistic, but we've had. We've had a lovely little run, hasn't it? It's been it's it's joyous. Worked out, yeah. Um, this is a different, different test altogether. And mm. I've got to say, like the Sweden game, I felt okay. I was so nervous for Colombia. I'm at a different level for this game because Croatia are a good side, really, really good side. Mm. So, what does Southgate do? Does he change this team, or does he have to stick with what he's, what's worked so well so far? Uh, I think he's going to have to stick with the team that we went against Sweden and has sort of proved so successful throughout the tournament. Uh, I sort of said before that Sweden game, we needed to see England step up a level. We needed more from the likes of Deli Ali, Henderson, yeah. Lingard in that midfield. And I think we saw that. So. I think for me, he's got to stick with that same side. Henderson, I know there's kind of a few question marks over his fitness. He might be an injury doubt, but he was fantastic in that game against Sweden. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he's going to be fit. I don't know if it's just maybe used to try and play devil's advocate, but like, part of me does wonder that this, because this is a different test, there needs to be a, a slightly different formation, maybe a bit more defensive stability. Or am I, are these just the, the battle scars of being an England fan? I'm yeah. so nervous about it. We need to just go and take this, take, take them off. Yeah, there's, there's no, nothing in our performances over this World Cup that suggests that we should change the system at all. Southgate's no. come out and said, this is our system, this is the way we're going to play. He's not going to change it for Croatia. I understand the logical like, the aspect of thinking, well, Modric and Rakitic are very good in midfield, yeah. but it doesn't matter. It's our system. We, uh, Croatia are a good side, but they're not as good as England. What about injuries? Like this is a team that we're we're fine if it, if, if everyone's fit, but yeah. Vardy's struggling. And there's been some chat about Henderson yeah. as well, and you're like, of yeah. everyone, but he's probably my player of the tournament for England right now. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't say that, but I would say he's crucial to what we're doing. And without him, it, yeah, he's massive. He is. He is. Uh, but the, the latest reports in the media saying that it will play, it will be fine. It was a cautionary yeah. thing in coming off. So. Okay. Fingers crossed. Um, I wonder if a part of that was as well was the booking. That, that if he'd got another booking, then that might have affected him for the semi-finals. Yeah. So the quarter-finals is that last stage where that's gonna could hurt you a little bit. But yeah. he's, you're, you're assuring all England fans he's fine. He's fit. As, as far as I've read, yes. Okay. I think um, <laughs> I think potentially the biggest question is over Raheem Sterling. So obviously in that game against Sweden, there was some criticism for him missing those sort of two golden opportunities. But I think if you view it in a sort of a, a wider sense, he was brilliant in that game, especially in the second half, his performance, yeah. the movement, the runs, making that space. I think he's crucial to the way England play. So although there seems to be a debate over whether he should be dropped for Rashford, I think he has to start this game. Absolutely. You know, every player in this, in this, in this team has a role. Yeah. It isn't just about the five seconds when you're on the ball. And the problem with viewing football from a pub. Yeah, very emotional. Yeah, emotion, way. yeah, an emotional way. Is yeah. that you can only really absorb the minutes that the players are on the ball. Yeah. And that's how you define whether, whether or not they've had a good game. Sterling, you know, England have, uh, have had the highest pressing percentage in the final third of any team in the World Cup. The closest Stats. was Belgium and, uh, and, and Brazil. And they, oh, were, they, were, they were like 6.4, 6.8, and uh, England were 8.3. So Sterling, Those are numbers. Sterling, Those are numbers. Is, Sterling is crucial to this. You yeah. change it, then, then, then you're changing the system. It's got us this far. Do you, do you, do you think people are slightly nervous to criticise? Reem Sterling properly. Nervous no, to criticise him. Yeah, just no, because no, not from what I saw on Saturday night. Really, no, it was uniform no, booing no. when his name was read You're out. You're kidding me? Yeah, it was disgraceful. That is yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I would say about Raheem Sterling is that I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just the circles that I, I'm around that people all understand what yeah. he offers. But if we, he's he's off, he's our centre forward. 
Kane mm. drops off. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we're scoring a lot of set pieces, which I'm happy about. But in terms of creating stuff outside of that, his end product needs to improve. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And, and, but so this is a guy who's played left wing most of his career, right yeah. wing most of his career. Is there any worth in talking about bringing in Rashford instead or Welbeck instead? For me, no. I think yes, there are those question marks over Raheem Sterling's finishing. It's something that it's not new. It's not unique to this tournament. But I think as Gareth Southgate sort of said after the game, he offers so much more. And I think as well that game against Sweden was our most sort of fluid performance, it was our most comprehensive performance and we did seem to step it up a level so I think it's actually a bigger risk now to drop Sterling for say Rashford mm. when you know the system as Flav said is working and I think it's only going to improve going into this game against Croatia, a team yeah. who are going to have tired legs against Sterling up front. Uh, the limbs, yeah. the limbs if Sterling scores a winner in the semi-final, I just can't even like, get my head around it, it's going to be ridiculous. It will. Um, be nice. Let's move on to Croatia because mm. as I said at the start of this video, it's a different test, it's a different level. The, the group stage they were fantastic. Tore Argentina apart. Mm. I know we did a video after that. And we a, poor, were, a poor Argentina. Poor Argentina. Side. True, very true. And and once they've got to the knockout stages, they've played a lot of football. 120 minutes yeah. twice in six days. Mm. We watched a Denmark game out in Russia, and we weren't really impressed with them after expecting a lot. Um, how good are they? Uh, Rakitic, Modric, and Perisic—they're kind of three main main men, mm. and and that's what you have to to deal with the midfield. If, if, if Modric plays deep, I actually think it's going to be more effective playing deep in that midfield with Rakitic than, than if he plays as a 10, mm. because it, it, their class will overrun our single man midfield in Henderson. That midfield area does feel like it's, it's so crucial in, in who wins the game, because this is an England team that likes to control possession, and we've played against teams who generally let us have it. Mm. Um, but Croatia want to do the exact same thing. So you think Modric playing a little bit deeper is the smart option? Because against there's a few things written about the the Russia game. He started deeper, wasn't really working, then second half moved a bit further. Yeah, but Russia didn't play with one single midfielder like we will. So it, it will just create additional room for him. And Modric can be a metronome in that midfield and and really you know cause us problems. But mm. I think them wanting to hold the ball was actually will play into our hands. Perisic, as we know, loves to bomb forward, less responsible defensively, going to leave huge gaps mm. on that right-hand side as, they, as he did against Russia. Their, their left-back, their name's excuse... Strinic. Strinic is uh, kind of a public scape, scapegoat for them. Um, I saw that. He, he came out and said, he went, don't worry, I'm used to it. Like, yes. He's so known as he's, you know, he's the guy that they turn to when they want to get... And, and no matter how useful it, it is for our own public scape, scapegoat, Mm -hmm. In Sterling, he, he perhaps will be afforded a lot more space to be more damaging than he has been so far in this tournament. But crucially, the surprise of the tournament, Harry Maguire, big surprise, but I just want to shout out for, for Kieran Trippier, who no one oh, at the yeah. end of the season would even <laughs> give them a chance of making this squad, has become crucial. And him, uh, the service that he can provide to Sterling down that right-hand side with the room, yeah. I just think they're going to... I think we're going to be able to get out and down that way. I know we're going to be able to get out. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think when we when we've looked at the great little moments of play that we've had, mm. because I don't think we've we haven't again and again and again just cut teams up. We've dominated games. I don't mean totally cut up teams, no. but the few no. times that we have, when I think to the Tunisia game, it was it was Trippier and Sterling and a, often a ball from Henderson over the top. The yeah. Same thing happened against uh, against Sweden time and again with Sterling, yeah. and I think that's that's the good side of Sterling's game that he does have that telepathy with uh, with Henderson mm. um, and that's going to be a, a key area for, for us to kind of really really get out of them. Mm. What about up top for Croatia? Do you think you've got Mandzukic works really really hard, Kramaric mm. who we watched the Denmark game and he was terrible. They've got three probably world-class players, Perisic borderline world-class but Modric and Rakitic essentially but other than that you know, what else they, they got? Can, <laughs> they can, what one of them else would get in that England side? Yeah. I, I think, uh, I, it's, I think it's a more even battle, is it? Yeah. But, I mean, you mentioned those strikers there, but as we're saying, given our defence, given Harry Maguire's dominance in the air, who would you back? Him well, or Mandzukic? I'm going for Maguire every time. Well, that's the final thing I think we've got to really talk about is those set pieces, because yeah. actually, when you look at Croatia and what the last two games, the Denmark game it was a long throw, um, and they were able to score in the, in the first minute. Extra time against Russia. It was a, it was a decent cross, but the marking was gone. Is that because they're knackered, or is it because because they don't defend touch tight enough? Mm. I, I don't know. But those are the last two games, and they're conceding goals like that, and they're walking into a game against a team who are just frightening at set pieces. It's, mm. it's unbelievable how yeah. and Modric in his interviews has been talking about how 
how You're they need to step England, yeah. up. And uh, could, could we win this whole World Cup on set pieces? Yeah, just, just a free kick. We could, penos, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think the problem is, for Croatia, is that how do you deal with Harry Maguire? Because he's a phenom. I can't believe he, Harry Maguire he, is like the, the danger man. But, but, it's, it's, but it's true. He's, he's a danger man because of a very simple thing that he can do. Mm. And that's read the flight of the ball and get his massive head <laughs> on, on the end of it. If you're correct from Croatia's perspective, what do you do here? You put Mandzukic on him or Lovren, right? Yeah. Or by, maybe both. But then, if they do that, there's gaps in that, in that box. And with people like Sterling, and people like Lingard, Kane, bring on the love train. You mentioned it there. Trippier, Trippier with the delivery that he's got as well. It's just, um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, And from, it's real. from wide, Young's, young, uh, young's uh, yeah, uh, deliveries into a box have been incredible. Look, it's coming home. <laughs> I'm feeling more no confident. More discussion. I'm feeling more confident the more it's we're talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. There's no other social setting where you can kiss or hug or grab or shake a man, a random yeah, man yeah. because a ball crossed the line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, that's what just feels so right. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's so and it's right. about being together and it's about yeah. sharing these moments. And you know, it is. <laughs> if we can. If, if we can. can. I'll be just one more time. time. Gonna, more but, it, but it is. Football's about food and it's about beer and it's about being together and experiencing all those things together. And there's nothing that goes better together than beer, football and food. One thing I will say, don't be throwing this up in the air. You oh yeah, way too nice. Right, predictions. Go for it. Three 0 England. Three 0 Yeah, I'm so confident. Um, I think I'm going to go more conservative. I think maybe two one to England. Take Harry Maguire set piece for the winner. Yeah, I think. I think Ooh. it's going to be two one two. I think we're. Okay. I think we're going to go at them. We're going to go at them straight away. We're going to go. These guys are knackered. And we're going to just run him into the ground. And we're going to win. We're going to win, guys. So you've turned around. You're very confident now. <laughs> he's, got me, he's got me. He's got me. So there you have it. The boys and me, we think we're going to the World Cup final. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Get yourself some dirty fries wherever you're watching yeah. the game. Go with the hands. I wish you a calm, enjoyable experience against, uh, against Croatia on Wednesday. Hopefully, England will be in the World Cup final. Make sure you subscribe to Ball Street. We will be here to do another preview for the World Cup final. England preview. England. An England preview, hopefully, for that huge, huge match. Make sure you don't miss it. If you don't want to miss it, then subscribe to Ball Street. We'll see you soon.